Mike's here representing Drupal Commerce. I'm Tim Rohali, I'm an Uber Card maintainer, and I'm here uh, helping to present and uh, as a representative of what's going on in the Uber Card scene. So we're hoping to have a, a good, insightful conversation. Um, please feel free to ask questions at any time. Um, you know, this is very community focused, and it's important to get feedback. So what we've been trying to do is to work out some sort of um, a strategy to keep commerce in uh, Drupal, because we think that Drupal is going to be the best solution for commerce now and in the future. So I'll let Mike start. And so um, there's a few things that make Drupal really good for uh, free commerce, besides just being Drupal and being nice to work with. Um, Drupal is really good at managing content. And the majority, the vast majority of an e-commerce site is really just managing content. Um, products are content, you know, descriptions, help pages, all of that stuff. When you move to checkout, that's really where the commerce begins. So um, for, from that perspective, Drupal is really great because you can do 90% of what you need to do without commerce developers having to write any code. Another really good reason is Drupal is very social and there's, being, there's a really big movement to do social commerce. Um, there are other e-commerce solutions out there. Um, a lot of them are really good. There's very few good open source solutions and the uh, kind of our biggest competitor from like the Drupal e-commerce perspective has been Magento in the past. They were just uh, purchased fully by eBay. So you know there's a lot of people that turned off by that. Um, there's Presta Shop. They're pretty small, regional. Mostly, they're big in France. There's OS Commerce, but nobody has the community that Drupal does. Um, nobody has the module support that Drupal does. Nobody has the developers that Drupal does. So, looking at Drupal and Drupal-based e-commerce, there is the Drupal and external system approach, which is you take Drupal, you have it do what it's really good at, which is and vertical, creating, reading, updating, and deleting content, and all of the modules that go with that. And then you bolt a separate service onto it, or a separate site onto it, where you do some really crazy integration to try and make the two play together. Um, one example of this is the Gentle module. And it, uh, it's a pretty interesting system. Um, I don't use it, but then again, I'm partial. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a uh, its biggest flaw is trying to keep all of the users, for instance, in sync with the two systems. And how do you maintain that when you start to grow? Um, you also have theming. Like, you have to understand how to theme Drupal, and you have to understand how to theme this other system. The, you know, I'd like to also point out that a lot of the e-commerce systems are like that. When you go out and you look for open source e-commerce, or even e-commerce that you pay for, you're going to find carts. And that's what they are. They don't have any of those other things that you would get from a content management system. They don't have the, the social networking integration. But they don't have the ability to add you know, comments and ratings on products just like you would for any other thing. They don't have you know, blogs where you can write about the great products that you bought or the great products that you're trying to, to sell. Um, so when we talk about keeping e-commerce in Drupal, it's not just we want this module or that module or we want it anything else into Drupal. We want to be able to leverage the power of Drupal to sell things and do it all from within the Drupal platform, not have to worry about making our external cart look like part of our Drupal site. It is part of the Drupal site. So that's where we're heading with this. And that's why solutions like Magento are less than satisfying because you do have two separate distinct platforms and you're spending all your time so uh, the other thing is there are systems like this where you can replace kind of the Drupal portion of that diagram with other CMSs. But again, Drupal has a lot of big value when it comes to e-commerce. So the, the thing that Drupal's been successful at in the past is Drupal and Ubercard. And Ubercard's been very successful because it gets you a 
a lot closer to Drupal. You can theme Uber Card in mostly the same way you can theme uh, Drupal. And so it's much more familiar. If you want to like, or elaborate right. on that. And, I, and I think, you know, one of the things you can look at is, you know, as a measure of success, is what percentage of Drupal users are using Uber Card. And it's actually about 10%. As far as we know, because the statistics available to us are, you know, limited, and our only one is reported by the update module. Not everybody turns those on, and um, <coughs> the update module, for example, doesn't keep Drupal five statistics. And even though that's old, we still have, we know we have thousands of users still on Drupal five, and they haven't migrated for. Um, but what I think has made Rubricard successful is the fact that it just works from and I think it's really interesting to note that a lot of the people who are using Ubercart came to Drupal because of Ubercart, not the other way around. People are looking for a cart, they find out about Ubercart, they install Drupal just because Drupal is required by Ubercart. Um, Tim's uh, the co-maintainer of Ubercart now, fantastic contributor to the community, and he came to Drupal I, from Ubercart. Yeah, that is my story too. I was looking for a cart, and I installed Ubercart, and I almost failed. I found out I had to install this content management system to use it. Um, but I'm glad I did. Uh, but because of that, you know, the reason Ubercard has been successful in that manner is because it's um, abstracting you a bit from Drupal. It's insulating you from Drupal, you might say. It's providing its own interface to the user that is, does not necessarily correspond with the way Drupal users would want to do it. So it's more focused towards a non-Drupal user to a novice who is approaching Drupal for the first time, as opposed to being faced towards people who have been working in Drupal for a long time and just want to turn on a module and create a store out of that. So um, this has been really good, but what we found was that it had some shortcomings. Mostly, it's not utilizing the underlying systems of Drupal. Six, you didn't have the field and entity system. So that was kind of one of the downsides is we had to have our own method of saving products and saving orders. And it uh, it was definitely difficult at times. There's some pretty ugly architecture uh, on the back end of, of Ubercart. Yeah, and, and, uh, and a lot of this is historic. Um, you know, when you when you Ubercart was first created for Drupal 5, so what did you have in Drupal 5 early on in the you didn't have, CCK wasn't a big thing. Not many people <coughs> used CCK, it was a little module. Um, so that changed as time went on. Um, Fuse was not able to display order data because orders were in their own table. Fuse was only able to display nodes, um, and, no, and orders were not nodes. Um, but this has changed. This has changed in the past uh, four years at Uber. And especially the big changes in Drupal 7 are the entity API, the field API, um, views 3, all these new capabilities that are now being built into uh, Drupal Core enable a much tighter integration than Ubercard is able to provide right now. The other downside is although a lot of things are very similar, um, you still have a slightly disconnected user experience. There's the Ubercard way to do a lot of and it's a lot better than having, say, the Magento way and the Drupal way and trying to manage that relationship. And the integration is much easier because you're working on the same database. You can use all the same API functions. You, know, you can write a module that works with Drupal and Ubercard at the same time. So it's, it's a huge step in the right direction. But there are also some significant downsides to it. So what we've done with commerce is we've tried to make it extremely uh, tied to the core of Drupal 7. And Drupal 7 is really what has enabled us to have this tight integration because we can have our own entities that are part of the you know, core entity system and our own fields that plug right into it. It allows us to have a, a system that offloads a lot more of that effort from us. We can depend on the community as a whole to have really solid systems for, for all of that. Um, plus, by doing that, we get user integration. Um, we get integration with uh, panels, for instance, for, for the most part. Um, the the theming is much more intuitive. We can use field formatters, and um, it's it's a it really brings things together that much closer. So the at the end of the day, 
this type of architecture where you can have almost seamless integration between the two because Drupal 7 has advanced enough to allow that. It's really the, the prime area to be. And so as a, as a commerce community, this is really where we want to be. Um, Ubercard's doing some stuff to move this direction, um, but there's a, a lot of legacy there. Right, and, and what, where we are now is sort of an awkward in-between phase. Um, as I said, Ubercard has somewhat over 30,000 users. Um, and that, that's, that's a big user base, and we don't want to abandon that. We don't want to just say, Okay, Ubercard is turned off, <laughs> and you can no longer use Ubercard. Um, we feel just like you have an upgrade path from Drupal 6 or the Drupal 7 core, we need an upgrade path from e commerce and Drupal 6 to e commerce in <coughs> Drupal 7. We need to preserve that user base and support our faithful, faithful users here. Um, one of the problems that we have doing that is Drupal Commerce being a very complex system, tightly integrated with all these new features in core, um, suffers from the same problem that Drupal 7 suffers. It has very low adoption still because there, there is a, the community is still largely focused on Drupal 6. Um, so Drupal Commerce is more of a forward thinking project where it's where we want to be. And what we're trying to figure out is how do we get there from where we are currently. So here's a very quickly diagram of kind of how the commerce community is right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got Drupal Commerce on one side, we've got Ubercard, that was as close as I could get to that orange. Um, on the other, we've got Amazon Store integration, PayPal integration, There's some attempts to do Magento integration. There's a service called Light Commerce, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but it's uh, it's very confusing. There's a lot of stuff there, and there's a lot of people, especially developers, who have limited time, being pulled in a lot of directions. No, and by community, you know, the community is not only the people. The community is the the whole what we call the ecosphere of contributed modules. Um, and right now, there's something like. 450 modules which mention Ubercar on their project page. So that represents a huge user base, not, not in terms of, only in terms of developers, but in terms of people who are users of those modules. And we want to see what we can do to, to take that community and preserve that community, which right now is, is largely leaning towards Ubercar because it was built up around Ubercar, and preserve that in Drupal so we can continue it. So our goal for the future is really to have one big happy community, and, you know, sit around a campfire to sing um, There's a lot of things we have to do though to get there. Uh, as Tim was mentioning, there's a lot of contributed modules that only work with the regard right now. Um, there has been a very quick adoption in seven with uh, Drupal seven developers to try and uh, add stuff for for Drupal Commerce. Um, but there's still a, a lot of Drupal 6 developers that have a ton, there's probably 50 or 100 payment gateways that are supported with, with Ubercard, for instance, and there's, what would you say, around like maybe 8 to 10 in commerce at, at a high guess? I didn't get it correct. Oh, I was playing Payment through. gateways. <laughs> I thought you were paying attention. Um, <laughs> payment gateways in commerce. You know, there's yeah, there's like 20. There's 20? Yeah. Okay, so. So I, I think the takeaway from this slide is that you know Drupal Commerce's vision of the future and Ubercard's vision of the future is not that we have two competing systems and that we maintain them independently and we fight out for which one is the best and fight for a user share. But we see this as something where we both have the same goals. Um, we've started at different places to get to that those goals, but we're both heading towards the same destination here. And as I said, the only um, the only real practical issue that remains to be worked out over the over the course of time is 
got users on multiple systems. And how do we go towards one um, community that's really rallied around having Drupal as just the best e-commerce system, open source e-commerce system on the market? And the, the things that we need to do, obviously there's a lot of modules and a lot of development work that has to happen. Um, there's some that are needed for both. So uh, a great example are payment gateways and shipping. Um, we've been working over the last week, uh, Tim and, and one of the commerce guys have been working on creating a shipping system where it would be theoretically possible that you have a, a FedEx module and a UPS module and they could theoretically work for both systems. Yeah, and, and let's examine those use cases, the payments and shipping, um, right off the bat. The, the thing those have in common is that they tend to have an, ex, uh, an API where they which they use to um, communicate with external systems. So for a payment gateway, uh, for example, like the PayPal payment gateway, you would use the PayPal API in order to send the transaction to PayPal and get a confirmation of that transaction back from PayPal. The API that you use there is going to be the same whether you're running Rubricard or Drupal Commerce. The only way is how you interface that API into, into Drupal, whether it's through the uh, Rubricard modules or whether it's in the Drupal Commons module. So we don't see a need for duplication of effort here with things like payments and shipping that we have on third party APIs. What we see is the ability or the opportunity to use all that work that has gone into creating these uh, payment modules and these shipping modules and leverage that effort and use it in Drupal Commons to preserve the functionality that already exists in be able to take advantage of Drupal Commerce's underlying tight integration with Drupal Core um, at the same time. So uh, the other thing that we really want to avoid is we don't need to have you know, two or three or four people in the community that are monitoring the PayPal APIs for changes or you know, just experts in that and experts in commerce or Drupal Core. Um, we've got people out there that are very knowledgeable in the payment gateways they've written for and they can easily do a port. A lot of that code is how do you talk with the external system, not how do you talk to Drupal. So the idea is, you know, the same uh, the same philosophy behind why we don't like forks of anything is because it's much better to have two people working on one project and you get a better product that way than to have two people each working on their own individual product. So there's some modules that can definitely, um, you know, be looked at and potentially look at then there's uh, also some modules that really are only platform specific. You know, we don't need to have a commerce file module with Ubercard because Ubercard has UC file already baked into it. Um, we don't need to have UC views in Drupal Commerce because we've got views integration out of the box. So, right, so part of this, in fact, a good, a good chunk of these 450 contributed modules for Ubercard are adding functionality to which is not a new part for. Part of that is adding functionality like tighter integration with views that doesn't come with the Uber card. Um, and as Mike said, that's not needed in Drupal Commerce because the underlying architecture was redone so that there is already tight integration with views. Um, they don't have to do anything special to, to uh, be exposed to views because everything's built on fields and entities and um, that almost comes for free in the Drupal 7 architecture. Uh, whereas that was something that you had to push and you had to work hard for in Drupal 6 or before. Uh, so, so those platform specific modules do not need to be ported, but it, abandoning them does not represent abandoning loss of functionality. We keep the same functionality in the two systems um, without having to support that module in so another thing is we have to make sure we have a migration path. Um, you know, not dropping functionality, making sure that um, if somebody wants to have Ajax check out, um, we can well, render an Ajax um, product selection uh, that we can, you know, we have, uh, you see Ajax, what's the module for that in the card? There's a module in the card to allow us to you change your attribute Um, 
So making sure things like that exist in commerce. But then there's also making sure that there's a migration path so that people don't have to completely rebuild their site. All right, so part of this was commerce with the luxury of um, re with redeveloping everything from scratch was able to identify those important parts of Ubercard and uh, Ubercard contributed modules <coughs> that were popular and identify why they were popular and build that functionality into Drupal Commerce. And that's why, for example, you don't need to port UC views. That's why um, you don't need to port this Ajax attribute options. That's something that needed to be added on to Ubercard, but that exists from the beginning in, in Drupal Commerce. Not all of it does, though. And so there's the migration of the functionality and then there's also the migration of the data. And uh, another thing that we really need to do is enable the users. A lot of people came to Ubercart or came to Drupal to Ubercart because Ubercart could get going out of the box. And Ryan did a fantastic job of really focusing on the end user. Despite uh, a lot of the issues that it has, it's still one of the better systems out there for, you know, you drop it onto your site, you enable a few modules, and within a few minutes, you've got a catalog. Gets some motivation behind you to create a store. That's something that can't be left behind. Um, so, migrating the, the data, um, also making sure that we keep a really good user experience so that people can qu quickly get up and going in their new platform and then be telling all their friends how much fun it was. Um, and, and, you know, to get from, um, from here to there, like Mike said, that Ubercart appeals to the people who are not Drupal people, well, at least initially sucks in people who are not Drupal people and makes them part of the cult. Um, but commerce has a, a, a different focus um, in that it's, right now, primarily, it's taking people from within Drupal, people who are competent Drupal site builders or, or, or developers or themers, and it's, it's addressing their needs. So it's not drawing people in from the outside necessarily this point, and that's something in terms of focusing on the users that we'd like to maintain. We would like to make sure that Drupal Commerce becomes something that is accessible to people from outside the Drupal community. One of the huge benefits of Commerce is its integration with views and other systems so that Drupal site builders just intuitively know how it works. The downside is that if you're not a Drupal site builder,
it's uh, the benefit you have with commerce is that oh, it's yeah, let me just put in a plug. Yeah. Um, okay. Right after after we're done here in, in the same lecture hall, there's going to be an introduction to Drupal Commerce. And then after that, there's going to be an introduction to Uber Car in Drupal 7. So if you're interested in finding out in, in detail more about these two systems, you can just stay in your seat. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we can give you a brief overview right now. There will be blood wrestling as well. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the nice things with Commerce is it is very close to core. And it was developed by Ryan, who was also the person that developed Uber Car. So it has a decent amount of maturity from the concepts of you know how should a system work, from the experience of commerce guys and all the people that have helped us um, in various sprints that we've had. We just had our sixth um, open community sprint for Drupal Commerce. Um, it's got a handful of installs, so you know if you're looking for something that has you know a, a three your measure of maturity, then it's not very mature. But from the richness of experience that went into it, um, it's, you know, in a lot of ways, it's the next evolution of, of other systems. And you see, you also can't have it both ways. Um, right now, Drupal Commerce is tightly integrated with <coughs> Drupal Core, and Drupal Core 7.0 is still a new thing. Um, a lot of the dependencies, things like uh,
you're building a new site in, in Drupal 7, you don't do anything intermediate. You pick one or the other. Yeah. So um, I'll start by saying I've never actually upgraded a Drupal site. Um, I have taken clients from 4.7 to 5 to 6, and I've um, taken, I don't think, I haven't done a 6 to 7 client yet. But um, whenever I've looked at moving a client, like they, they come to us and say, hey, we want to do something else, and we'll look at what our options are and say, well, we can migrate it, but these modules either don't exist or aren't even needed anymore in, in the next version of Drupal. And there's a lot of architecture changes. There's a lot of really cool stuff. You know, in six, the theming layer got a lot of attention. Was, there were a lot of things you could do better. Um, in five, you, you had a lot more options with, with Node and CCK. So going from four seven to five, doing a straight upgrade to me, I just couldn't justify it. Um, so my same logic would probably apply here. Like if you were a Commerce Guys client coming to us saying, "Hey, I've got a Drupal six with our site." and I want to be on 7 for these reasons. We'd look at how your site was built, and we'd look at how we would implement it in 7, and then we would decide if it makes sense to, to do a re-implementation and import all the data. And that's how I've always handled an upgrade. Uh, it's, uh, you know, there's just a lot of good reasons. Like, why would you, uh, to me, what's the logic of going from a 6 site to a 7 site and keeping all the same functionality? Uh, it's like when clients come to us and say, We've got this really big site with this really big budget, and we want to, you to clone this site in Drupal. And I said, well, you know, I'd love to take your money, but why do you want to reproduce the exact same thing you have now? So let's stop and look at what you really need to have and see how we can bring that to you in the new version. Um, so Tim's right. We are working on ways to migrate from Drupal to Commerce. Um, it's, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not, you know, install Ubercart, or take your Drupal 6 site with Ubercart, you know, drop the sites folder in Drupal 7 with all the new Drupal 7 modules and, and run the update script. It would be more uh, migrate as in the migrate module. Um, but so I also export your products, export your orders, export your product images, all those things, and then in the new system, import <coughs> We're also working on with um, some partners on trying to get a, uh, some services where we just have a Ubercart to commerce um, commerce guys service. So we'll kind of help guide you through it. Um, I can say that commerce guys doesn't build Ubercart sites anymore, um, but we also have lines drama on staff, so <laughs> that makes it a lot easier for us to. Uh, we started that back in August, um, so it's. You know, we've got a lot of experience with it. We love working with commerce, and I think that you know, you'd have a hard time convincing us to do anything other than that. Um, but your situation is probably different than ours. Um, most of our clients have six-figure budgets, so they can afford to be a little more leading edge. And they also, um, you know, the average lifespan of one of their sites is four or five years. So for them, if they were to launch six today, you know, eight comes out, say, two years from now, and they're on end of life software. Um, so that's the other justification a lot of our clients have, is by going on seven now, they gain more support time. Um, <coughs> and, and it's I not a clear answer. And, and I, yeah, I, I, I think your point is good that um, a lot of the people that you're dealing with right now are a subset of the really being served by Ubercard. Ubercard is not addressing those needs. Yeah. Ubercard is more addressing the, the, the smaller shops, the people who are keeping pace with Drupal rather than keeping at the, at the cutting edge. So we have people, people aren't talking right now about <coughs> migrating from six to seven. They're talking about migrating from five to six because five is no longer supported. So it's people who deployed a site two years ago um, and it's been working fine, they haven't had to touch it, and now that 5 is unsupported, they just want the site to continue working. They don't want to re-engineer everything, they don't want to redesign everything, they don't want to build new functionality, they're happy with what they have. Um, and that is a sort of um, scenario that an upgrade path might fit. Um, because yeah, if you, have, if you have the sufficient money, if you have the, uh, the need for a large complex website, base a 
big business office rather than a small business, you might want to put in the necessary work to uh, get as much functionality as you can right now. Yes? Um, I might have missed this in the beginning, but um, you made a good case of not having two systems. I'm wondering why we do. Is commerce the future? Or? Um, depends on who you ask. But uh, my biased opinion, yes. I think that uh, you know, originally Drupal Commerce started out as Uber, and we were going to develop a series of APIs. So, so remember, just to, again, remember that the guy who started, right, Ray, 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 Ryan, um, the guy who started Uber Card is, is Ryan Swallow, and he's the same guy who started Drupal Commerce. And this was supposed to be the 3.0, right? Right. So, yeah. so yeah. It's, Drupal Commerce started out as a re-engineering of UberCard within UberCard, and then split off. Um, and so that answer, that's another point kind of towards the maturity question, is you know, originally the code that's, that is now Drupal Commerce was going to be uh, the underlying APIs for UberCard, because UberCard didn't really have good underlying APIs. And we knew that was needed. To, to move forward. Um, the issues we had had lacking those APIs was that at every release, it was taking an extensive amount of time to try and catch up to where Drupal was. And it was um, during the five to six cycle, um, I can't remember how, but it was like almost a year after the six was out. UberCard 1.0 was released um, four months after <laughs> Drupal 6.0. Was released. Um, so, UberCard, and if you want to stay for my UberCard talk in two hours, um, you know I go over a bit of the history, and we have we have been constantly gaining ground on that. So, so you know, Drupal seven is just released. UberCard seven is just about to be released. Um, so we're not way behind the curve anymore. But it was always a struggle for exactly the reason that Mike said, is that there was not enough abstraction in the architecture of UberCard to insulate us from changes <coughs> in Drupal. So you had to port everything from scratch rather than just you know, change the internal API call. So uh, our, our theory at the time was that uh, we really need to have UberCard to maintain we need to start a new system that focus, focuses on APIs first and the developer experience first, and then bring all of the user experience of UberCard to that. And in doing that, we would have some really good APIs that we could have mature very quickly as Drupal matures. Um, so from our perspective, that was the most maintainable way to move forward. Right, and I think you know when you're talking about radical change and architecture, uh, you have two competing interests. Uh, it's easiest and perhaps you get the best result if you go off and start from scratch, which is what Drupal Commerce did. Um, it's much more difficult to do that in the framework of a heavily used <coughs> module and to be, be able to rip things apart and change it without grossly affecting your user base, without breaking their stores and breaking all the contributed modules. Um, I don't think that there's any significant dis difference between where we want to be in the future. It's the question of how you get it, how, how you get there. Um, and that's, I think that the point of the talk is we want to be standing up here together showing you that, you know, we can all get along. <laughs> There's no rift in the community, even though there are two modules that address the same needs. So if, um, if we keep to our original goals uh, when, when we started, I think by Drupal 8 we'll have Drupal Commerce. Um, and I think that we'll focus on migrating people during the seven cycle and then work together in one community in the future or four. Right. And I think when Drupal 8 comes out, that will be end of life for Uber Card. And in that meantime, there will be a smooth, easy, gradual migration path between the two. So what we, what we have what we have by that time is that we don't have, um, you know, we have all the same capabilities. Uh, hopefully, it comes sooner than later. But, um, but you know, we, we preserve the user base, we preserve the capabilities, and we don't just like rip that functionality out from the from the community in an effort to get to the to the goal at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah.
great example of yeah. something that's part of this big cloud community functionality that exists, sort of built on top of Google Cart, that we'd like to preserve that functionality for the Drupal Commerce. And it, it's going to be done a different way, but we're going to. We're working that. on that with a client right now. Uh, and we're not entirely sure we need a module to do it. Uh, we're doing a combination of organic groups plus Drupal Commerce. We have a group reference field on the products. And we are going to need some code to um, have a different add to cart form that respects the group's cart rather than somebody having a cart on the site as a whole, um, at least for this use case. But um, that's something that I think has gotten significantly easier. Um, and there, there's an existing contrib called Commerce Offer. It's just in the sandbox at the moment. Yeah. You can find that on you know, But you know, the idea with Commerce Offer is you can have your product, um, and then multiple groups can sell the same product by having an offer of that product at the price they pick. And, and that also illustrates the gap of where we are right now. Um, Drupal Commerce allows you to build that functionality into your site using things like organic groups and views and, and the underlying architecture of Drupal Commerce. Um, Ubercart's philosophy is more to provide you with a model module that you enable and you get that functionality. So there's there's still a problem from, I think, from the, 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 the user perspective, the usability perspective, um, especially when it comes to people who are not, you know, really, you know, very competent Drupal people. Um, that it's, it, it would be difficult for them to implement something like that right now, but it would be easy for them to turn on the module. That's not necessarily a reason to choose Ubercart right now, but we'd like to be able to preserve that ability to just turn on the module. And the way that's going to be done in Drupal Commerce is to have installed profiles. So um, UC Marketplace bolts onto the Ubercart side of this diagram. And with uh, with organic groups, it pulls on to Drupal. So we can almost get that, you know, we can get that with some blue code um, by using the existing off-the-shelf module and trying, instead of trying to write a new system that integrates just into Uber card. Did that address the question? Yeah, and uh, I mean, I think it's top line. Um, I don't have to go to the card on this project, it's just a catalog. Okay. Yeah, find us afterwards. Any other questions? Very, very impressed by 